In this video I'm going to look at the connection of a mains regulated power supply to our circuit. We're going to use a low cost 9 volt DC 300 milliamp supply. It's a very cheap uh, supply and allows us then to power our circuit directly from mains. In the previous experiment I set up a circuit that was supplied by a 9 volt battery. In this setup we have an LM7805 voltage regulator that takes a 9 volt input from our source and converts it into a 5 volt output that we then run to the rails at the top of the board. I use a resistor and an LED just to indicate that we've got supply to our circuit. Now I'm going to connect the oscilloscope lead so that we can evaluate the quality of signal that we're getting from this circuit. I connect the oscilloscope channel 1 to the plus 5 line and the ground of that line to the ground of my circuit. So this will allow us to look at this signal on the oscilloscope and see what kind of quality we're getting. Here's the signal. We're using DC coupling and you can see that there's, if you look at the bottom left hand corner, you see that channel 1 has 2 volts per division. You also notice on the left hand side with the little red marker that the signal is centered on zero. So you can see that if you count up the number of boxes you see there's two and a half boxes and you can see therefore that our value is about five volts. You can also read that using the measure function of most oscilloscopes and here you can see that the mean and RMS value of our signal is about 5.04, 5.05 volts. This is good because the voltage output from the regulator is within about 1% of what we require. To function correctly, digital circuits require a steady DC supply that's constant, but it often contains a small variation called ripple. Batteries in particular are very good sources of DC for electronic circuits. In this case now we're going to AC couple the same signal so it's centered around zero on the y-axis. This allows us to measure the peak-to-peak -peak voltage, which is the difference between the highest and lowest levels of voltage within the signal. In this case, we can see that the peak-to-peak -peak voltage is 7.2 millivolts. So that's about a variation of less than one-tenth of one percent, plus minus less than one-tenth of one percent on the signal. So it's a very good measure. We also measure the RMS value, which is useful for periodic signals, but not so useful in this case but we can see that it too is sitting at a value of 0.8 millivolts. The next thing that we're going to add to the circuit is a barrel jack socket. This type of socket will allow us to connect the mains lead directly to our board, our mains transformer lead directly to the board. This one has three pins. The first two pins are connected to ground and the pin at the end here is connected to the center pin of the, the jack and in this case that's our positive supply. So using the, the two legs with the pins that I've soldered in, it'll sit strong, fairly firmly on the board. We connect the ground pin into the ground pin of the voltage regulator. And it should sit fairly neatly. Okay. And then we connect in our small lead from our positive or from the center point on the, the barrel jack to the in point of our voltage regulator. So that sits fairly well. So then we can connect our supply. So that's the supply coming from the, um, the transformer. We plug that directly into our board and you can see that the LED lights up straight away. So we know that our board is, is, is working to some degree and this allows us then to add more components to the board to further improve our supply. I've added three new components to the board. The first one on the rightmost side with the letters DIP on the surface is a simple on off switch. This will allow us to just turn the power on and off to the circuit without disconnecting the barrel jack. I've added a diode in the center. It's a 1N4001 rectifier diode. We'll talk about that in a second. And I've also added in a component called a resettable fuse or PTC. These components are connected in series and they're connected from the positive pin of the barrel jack and then they're connected to the inline of the voltage regulator. The switch is in the center and the PTC is after the switch, but it doesn't really matter which order we use for this particular circuit. If we were to have some other output of the switch, well then we would need to be careful about what we do. The function of the diode is to protect the circuit in case we use an incorrect supply. So for example, if we were to reverse the supply by connecting a different transformer, well then 
This diode will prevent the current from flow and would perfect, protect our circuit. We're just going to check the voltages now across our circuit. So if we just check the supply, we can see that the 9 volt, 9 volt power supply is giving us 13.83 volts on our input. If we look at the other side of the diode, you'll notice that it's slightly lower. It's 13.12. And that's one of the features of a rectifier diode, is that there will be a voltage drop across it. In this case, it's 0 0.71 volts. You also see that the output from our regulator is 4.94 volts. And everything looks very good at this stage. The next component I added was a resettable fuse, or PTC. This stands for Positive Temperature Coefficient Thermistor. It's basically a type of resistor where the resistance varies significantly with temperature. So if the circuit tries to draw more than a certain amount of current, in this case it's 500 milliamps is the upper limit, so if you had a bad short for example in your circuit, the PTC would trip, so it heats up. And as it heats up the resistance of the PTC increases, so it would break the circuit and only allow a small current leakage. If you remove the short, well then the PTC resets and allows currents of up to 500 milliamps to flow again. So it's a resettable fuse that protects your system. So if you accidentally make a mistake in wiring your circuit, it protects your supply. And that's a very useful feature. So we can see here that this is our circuit. This is our intermediate circuit. We still have to make one more improvement. But you can see that at the moment this circuit works perfectly. If I turn the switch on, you can see that the LED lights up. And I can turn the switch off and the LED turns off. The problem with this circuit is that it's noisy. If we connect the oscilloscope to the circuit in pretty much the same way that we did before when we had the battery supply, we see that we get a completely different level of output. In this case here I've connected two channels of the oscilloscope to the circuit. The yellow plot is the plot of the input side of the circuit, so that's connected to the transformer input of the circuit. And the red plot is the output of the voltage regulator and that's our plus 5 volt rail with ground included. So you can see here that there's quite a difference in the quality of the signal that we're getting from this circuit and the quality that we got before. On the input side we have a peak to peak variation of about 548 millivolts which is quite a significant variation. On the output side, we have a peak-to-peak -peak variation of about 40 millivolts, 40 to 44 millivolts, which is significantly higher than the 7.2 millivolt variation we had with the battery supply. So we're going to have to adapt our circuit and make a few small changes to the circuit to improve the quality of the signal. And the way we do that is with a couple of capacitors. Here I have connected a 100 microfarad capacitor on the input side of the voltage regulator and a 10 microfarad capacitor on the output side. Capacitors act as a store of energy on the power rails and help smooth the dips and rises in the supply. Larger capacitors are generally used across the power rails but we can also use smaller capacitors to smooth high frequency noise. So it's not uncommon in other experiments to connect a 0.1 microfarad capacitor across the supply input of the ICs in the circuit. These capacitors, as with most large capacitors, are electrolytic capacitors, which means they have a polarity, a positive and a negative side. And you can see this in the diagram. It's referenced by a plus on one side of the capacitor and a curve on the other side. But you can also see this on the capacitor itself. They generally have a large strip on the side with a big minus sign, so you can't miss it. And this is important because if you connect one of these capacitors in the incorrect way, it will blow. So let's look at this circuit now on the oscilloscope. Here I have my circuit as before, and I'm about to connect the capacitor to the input side. So watch channel 1. It suddenly changed from 40 millivolts peak to peak down to 24 millivolts peak to peak. And that's because I've added the 10 microfarad capacitor on the output side. I do the same on the input side. You see that we have 532 drops to 400. And you see it again, 532 now drops down to 420 millivolts when we connect the 100 microfarad capacitor to the supply side. And this leaves us with an output side peak to peak voltage of around 24 millivolts, which is as good as we're going to get with this supply. 
So that's our final circuit. You can see that it works if we turn on and off the LED. But more than that, the signal is reasonably clean considering we're, we're taking the signal from an AC main source. And that means that we're going to have to use some sort of transformer. And with that comes signal noise to our circuit. So this circuit is an important supply circuit that you're going to see used many times in the course of this module.